Morning, Evergreen Online. Today we are gathering virtually for our Sunday service as our leadership and volunteer community is meeting on campus for a time of worship, prayer, and equipping. The Evergreen Summit is sort of our deconstructed leadership retreat held over the entire month of August. If you're close by and you would like to join, please do because these gatherings are open to anyone. Now for our summit, this week's session today, we will focus on some helpful contemplative tools for cultivating our own character from a centered connection to Jesus, and also to provide some practices of peace and anchoring for the upcoming, upcoming tumult or tumultuousness of the election season. Now next week, our mental health awareness team will be leading a special training on active listening and facilitating good discussion in our ministry groups, so you won't want to miss. Lunch, snacks, and childcare will be provided, and some special goodies will be available for those who attend. If you're not available to attend or just have no interest at all, that's okay. The staff are providing online content for each Sunday, so you can tune in to our YouTube channel this month to continue worshiping with us. Now this morning, we have a few announcements to keep you kind of up to date in the life of our church family. First, even though our service is online, today is the first Sunday of the month, making it Communion Sunday. Please gather your own bread and cup to partake of the elements together later in the service. If this is your first time taking communion online, feel free to use whatever might be helpful and meaningful for the elements. For example, some juice, tea, milk, maybe even some coffee, along with a cracker, pastry, or a sl slice of bread. These will represent the body and the blood of Christ, and we will partake in the comfort of our individual homes, but recognize that we still partake as a community together this day. Now next, if you haven't already done so, please switch over to our new online giving platform for your tithes and offerings. I know we've been pushing this for what may seem like forever now, but we are trying to get every single one of our givers and supporters for our church to transfer over to Church Center before we close down Fellowship One in September. This new platform will be more centralized, easier to use, and includes some special features such as being able to pay for Evergreen events online and reducing Evergreen's transaction fees for our banking. Easy instructions for the transfer are available on our giving page, along with a video tutorial on our YouTube page. As we also transition to a new October to September fiscal year, we are moving our August quarterly congregational meeting, which would have been today, to September 22nd. This meeting will be a combined QCM and resource plan meeting and will allow us to vote our new resource plan into effect. 
This meeting is doubly important because we will also be voting for our bylaw changes, some updating of our church document to reflect the current culture and operations here at Evergreen. More details will be released as the date gets closer, but please mark your calendars with the new Sunday date. Now, our youth ministry will be hosting a pool party at Pastor Ryan's house on August 10th from 1 to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. So if you're a student from 6th grade to 12th grade, according to the 2023 to 2024 school calendar, we invite you out to celebrate the end of summer with swimming and games. Snacks, refreshments, and more will be provided. Just bring your own sunblock, swimsuit, and towel. Contact Pastor Ryan for more information. Now, as we come to the giving of our tithes and offering in our service, I invite you to consider supporting our ministry here at Evergreen, if you are not already. I want you to be a part of this, and I believe that giving is one way to feel connected and invested in our church family. If you'd like to start supporting Evergreen financially, just scan the QR code on screen or head over to our website and there's some easy instructions on how to do so. And if you'd like to support Evergreen through volunteering, which we also really value, please contact one of our pastors or you can sign up for our Leadership Summit next week and then just come and hear more about us in person. I'm grateful for the way that so many of you have continued your support and engagement of our ministry throughout the years. And today, um, as we pray for offering, perhaps, I th perhaps we can remember our leaders and volunteers who have committed their time and energy to our church so that we can continue to offer such meaningful ministry. So let's pray for them this morning as they gather right now to prepare for the upcoming year. Would you pray with me? God, this morning we thank you for our leaders and volunteers at Evergreen, for all those who give extra hours, extra energy, and extra resources to help run and lead our many teams and groups at this church. We pray for them today as they gather to worship, learn, and get equipped for the year ahead. Give them your divine vision for the ministry, give them helpful tools to do your good work, and give them your joy to energize and inspire. And God, as we give our tithes and offerings this morning of both financial gifts and gifts of service, bless what we have to offer and build a little more of your coming future here in this church. We worship you with all that we have and all that we are. In Jesus' name, amen. And now let's enter into a time of worship together. Praise forever to 
to the one who has been raised from the dead, who has resurrected all of us. We shout it out, we sing. As we worship you together today in our homes in this sanctuary we celebrate the fact that you reign you reign over all of our heartbreaks you reign all of our failures you reign over all of our failures god you reign over all of our successes all of our dreams all of our goals all of our lives god you are sovereign over it all and so despite whatever changes that we are experiencing now the transitions the getting used to's the newness of it all, the fatigue, the exhaustion, all the effort that it takes, God, we invite you into the center of it all because we know that when you are the one leading us, God, things cannot fail. Things can't help us succeed. Victory can only be found. We worship you today, God. Let our songs be a pleasing sound unto your ears. Amen. Let's continue worshiping the Lord together in our living room worship area. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's all been you, Jesus, Jesus, our sin, Jesus at the center of it all, Jesus at the center of it all, from beginning to the end, it will always be, 
always be, it's always been you, Jesus, Jesus, and nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do, oh, because oh, oh. Jesus, you're the same.
the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, from beginning to the end, it will always be, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus at the center. Now, a few weeks ago, we had plans to go to Disneyland as a family. Now, both of our daughters love Disneyland, and they have ever since they were old enough for Disney to start charging them full price for a ticket. Well, on this particular morning, one of our girls came into our bedroom and said that she wasn't feeling well. Now, I was initially suspicious of this statement because she sure seemed okay the night before, Maybe I thought this was a distraction so she wouldn't have to clean up her toys before we went or maybe it was some other ploy to get out of some, some sort of chore. So I told her, okay, if you're really sick, maybe you should stay home and not go to Disneyland. Now typically she would come to life at this statement and say, no, 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 daddy, I'm okay. I'm, I'm not sick. Look at me. I'm, I'm all better. But that particular morning she said, okay, I think, I think I should stay home. Now my jaw just about hit the floor at that point. I mean, what? She never says stuff like this. And then after she said that, I got super worried because I thought, well, maybe she really is sick. Maybe this is something serious because she never says something like this. Far and I were like, should we take her to the doctor? Should we call, go to urgent care? Something was wrong. We knew it because for our daughter, this was completely out of character. Now, most of the time when a person is acting out of character, it's usually a, a warning sign if it's like this, because we get accustomed to the way a person acts and responds to certain situations to the point where we expect them to act a certain way and sometimes depend on them to have this kind of repeated behavior. So it gets alarming when suddenly they act differently. It feels like something's out of place, like something is definitely wrong. In fact, we may even feel like something is wrong in our own lives when we feel like we're acting out of character. But perhaps that shift from normal is the very opportunity God might use to transform and grow us. Maybe acting out of character is exactly what we need. This year we've been on a journey of cultivating character because it's something that the world is sorely lacking right now. From our top leaders to the general public and it's it's the one thing I think maybe the world needs right now now for our August online series we're going to continue our journey from a different perspective of character and instead of focusing on maybe what character looks like we're going to explore God's occasional call to step out of character to do or engage in something atypical of ourselves so that we might be challenged to grow. Now, each week, one of our pastors will be sharing reflections on a time they found themselves called to something uncharacteristic and how God used that to cultivate something meaningful within. Now, for my entire life, I've been a rule follower. You know people like this. My excuse is that in many ways, maybe it's a part of my Japanese culture or it's a part of the way that I was raised in my family, or maybe it's just how God wired me as a person. I'm obedient for the most part. I don't like to cause trouble, whether it be breaking the rules or being an inconvenience for somebody else. Actually, both of those things are extremely unsettling for me most of the time. Now, some might call me cautious. I like to think of myself as calculated. For example, this is how crazy I am. When I'm at a stoplight as a pedestrian and the light is red, you know, the little red hand, even if there are no cars coming, it's really hard for me to cross the street, even if uh, there's nobody there. Now, and see, until I see that hand change into the little walking man, I'm going to sit there and wait. Now, it's not like I never cross the street when the light is red. It's just that there has to be a really good reason for me to do so. In general, that's who I am. I'm obedient and I try not to cause trouble. 
for me, that's being in character. Now, about a year ago, <clears throat> a fellow American Baptist pastor uh, emailed me and let me know of the plight of some of our local hospitality workers in the Los Angeles area. These are people that work in hotels and restaurants in the hospitality industry. And you may have seen some of this you know, around town as you dro drove through, through the city or on the news. Local hotel workers went on strike to fight for a living wage. Many of them have had to move two to three hours out of Los Angeles because of the dramatic increase in the cost of living. In addition, they would sometimes have to take on a second or a third job just to supplement their income and pay for food for their family and a place to live. Now, there were other issues of safety in hotels and additional grievances, but the bottom line was that these workers were fighting for their right to live within the city limits of the area that they worked, just to be able to live like a normal human being. And their union set up a civil disobedience action to put pressure on these hotels to strike a deal with these workers. The action involved a group of protesters who would risk arrest by stopping traffic in front of a major hotel outside LAX. This was a meticulously planned protest that involved the union, the LAPD, union lawyers, and community organizing groups. Now the union was already recruiting people to participate, about 200 to be exact, but what the union needed was some AAPI clergy. You see, many of these hospitality workers were Filipino and it would be important for them to see other AAPI clergy rather than just kind of white or black pastors there to support them, recognize faces that look like them. So when I first heard about this invitation to participate in this disobedience, this, this protest to support some of these workers, I just thought, you know what, nah, that's not me. The cause was noble. I would, I would agree that hotel workers should have the pay and protections that the union was pushing for. But you know what, that wasn't me. And I was glad that the protest was being planned and that so many people were willing to fight and just, uh, just, just to uh, have these workers earn a living wage. But it just wasn't me to get arrested, even for something like that. It was just out of character for me. And then, over the next few weeks, God started to work on me, little by little. I felt like doors were unlocked and open for me to participate. Different conversations that I had and schedule changes and little spiritual nudges in my heart. There wasn't any coercion that I felt to participate. I didn't feel like my arm was being twisted. I just had this sense that God was opening doors and inviting me simply to take a step in. Sort of like God was saying, Jason, I'm setting up this path for you but I'm not gonna force you. It's up to you. It's up to you to walk down and take this path. It was this calm but clear sense that my faith in Jesus was leading me to participate in this protest that was so out of character for me. So I did it. I talked it over with my family. I was trained and prepped by the union. I notified our staff and our board that I was gonna be doing this just in case I was on the news or he saw me in jail, and I participated in this civil disobedience action. In cooperation with the LAPD, the union set us up to block traffic in front of LAX and some, some large hotel chains. And there we held our ground alongside all of these wonderful hotel workers that were just fighting to earn a living wage. Then at a certain point, the LAPD stepped in, gave us a chance to disperse, which we intentionally disregarded, and one by one, all 200 of us were arrested. We were fortunate though. The action went exactly as planned, and while each of us was put under arrest, nobody was sent to jail that night. We just got a citation. Now this was in large part due to the pre precise planning of the protest groups alongside the LAPD and training of the union with all of us who, who participated. But there are a lot of things in this that I actually learned from the experience. Now, too many to talk about this morning, but don't worry because if I'm gonna get arrested, I'm gonna squeeze at least three different sermon stories out of this over the next years, okay? That is for a future date though. Today, I just wanna focus on one aspect of what I believe God showed me. Now, as I sat in that group, 
on that street in, <laughs> in the middle of Century Boulevard, I realized that it was my faith that had led me here and nothing else. Like I said, while the, the cause was undoubtedly good and no, uh, noble, I would have sooner let somebody else do this. The event was a huge inconvenience in my life at that moment, and I really just didn't want to get arrested. This kind of stuff was for activists, and I'm not an activist. All the brave character traits that I would expect a protester to have, I don't have those traits. But God showed me something that day. Maybe what God was calling me to was, was not a bold disobedience, but just a simple obedience of following the Spirit of Christ. And it reminds me of a passage in Acts 17 where coincidentally an early Christian named Jason gets arrested. In Acts 17, starting at verse 4, it says, Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. But other Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed, rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other believers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. Now it's funny, I was always drawn to this passage, obviously because of this guy's name, but I could never fully relate to the story because I never thought of myself as one who would get arrested for my faith. Now when I used to read this, I would be amazed at the boldness of Jason thinking, wow, what a brave and daring believer. If only I could live up to this sort of namesake. But now I read it and I think, you know, maybe Jason wasn't trying to be brave and bold. Maybe he was just trying to show some hospitality to Paul and Silas, whom he knew. Maybe he wasn't trying to defy Caesar's decrees intentionally. Maybe he was just simply trying to share his faith with those around him. Maybe Jason was less impressive than my imagination would have him to be. And maybe his bold, noble character wasn't cultivated through his intentional, fearless actions, but was just a side effect of his love for Jesus. Now, when people find out that I participated in this action with the hospitality workers, people are usually shocked because it's totally out of character for me. But there's also a note, as I talk to them, of respect that I sense. I imagine because it might seem courageous to get arrested. I don't know. I, I, I think the truth is actually less impressive because I'm not brave. I'm not that bold. And I'm not that noble. And if the opportunity came up again, I might still pass it off to some other person. I just think that what got me to do it and what got me through it was this honest desire to follow God's leading in my life. God opened some doors and I just walked through. You know, maybe that's how divine character is formed within each of us. Not so much by intentionally trying to be courageous, noble, or generous, or kind, but just by a simple desire to follow the Spirit's path that's laid before us, one step at a time. I think that's what makes Jesus' story so relatable to all of us. It wasn't strength or power that took him to the cross. It was humility, servitude, sacrifice, a simple desire to follow God's leading. And as we come to the virtual communion table this morning, may we all follow that simple desire that's within each of us so that God's character may be cultivated within. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, where Paul says, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake of the bread and the cup together. And as we eat and drink, may these elements grow a desire in us to follow the Spirit's leading, even when it's out of character for us. Because if we do, I think we'll be amazed at what's cultivated within. I'll go ahead and partake of the elements. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Just a reminder that you can still sign up for our in-person leadership summit for next week at 10 a.m. as the mental health awareness team facilitates a training on listening and facilitating discussions. Otherwise, we'll see you back online for our next Out of Character sermon series. And now, receive the benediction. May you see and follow God's invitation to step out of character this month and be blessed by how that step changes you. Grace and peace. We'll see you all next week.